The Rival Conceptions of God by C.S. Lewis. I have been asked to tell you what Christians believe and I'm going to begin by telling you one thing that Christians do not need to believe. If you are a Christian, you do not have to believe that all the other religions are simply wrong all through. If you're an atheist, you do not have to believe that the main point in all the religions of the whole world is simply one huge mistake. If you are Christian, you are free to think that all these religions, even the queerest ones, contain at least some hint of truth. When I was an atheist, I had to try to persuade myself that most of the human race have always been wrong about the question that mattered to them the most. When I became a Christian, I was able to take a more liberal view. But of course, being a Christian does mean thinking that where Christianity differs from other religions, Christianity is right and they are wrong. As in arithmetic, there is only one right answer to a sum, and all the other answers are wrong, but some of the wrong answers are much nearer to being right than others. The first big division of humanity is into the majority, who believe in some kind of god or gods, and the minority who do not. On this point, Christianity lines up with the majority, lines up with ancient Greeks and Romans, modern savages, Stoics, Platonists, Hindus, Mohammedans, etc., against the modern Western European materialist. Now I go on to the next big division. People who all believe in God can be divided according to the sort of God in which they believe. There are two very different ideas on this subject. One of them is the idea that he is beyond good and evil. We humans call one thing good and another thing bad, but according to some people there is merely a human point of view at hand. These people would say that the wiser you become, the less you would want to call anything good or bad, and the more dearly you would see that everything is good in one way and bad in another, and that nothing could have been different. Consequently, these people think that long before you got anywhere near the divine point of view, the distinction would have disappeared altogether. We call a cancer bad, they would say, because it kills a man, but you might just as well call a successful surgeon bad because he kills a cancer. It all depends on the point of view. The other and opposite idea is that God is quite definitely good or righteous, a God who takes sides, who loves love and hates hatred, who wants us to behave in one way and not in another. The first of these views, the one that thinks God beyond good and evil, is called pantheism. It was held by the great Prussian philosopher Hegel, and as far as I can understand them, by the Hindus. The other view is held by Jews, Mohammedans and Christians. And with this big difference between pantheism and the Christian idea of God, there usually goes another. Pantheists usually believe that God, so to speak, animates the universe as you animate your body, that the universe almost is God, so that if it did not exist, he would not exist either, and anything you find in the universe is a part of God. The Christian idea is quite different. They think God invented and made the universe, like a man making a picture or composing a tune. A painter is not a picture, and he does not die if his picture is destroyed. You may say, he's put a lot of himself into it. But you only mean that all its beauty and interest has come out of his head. His skill is not in the picture, in the same way that it is in his hand or even his head. Except you see how this difference between pantheists and Christians hangs together with the other one. If you do not take the distinction between good and bad very seriously, then it is easy to say that anything you find in this world is a part of God. But of course, if you think something's really bad and God really good, then you cannot talk like that. You must believe that God is separate from the world and that some of the things we see in it are contrary to his will. Confronted with a cancer or a slum, the pantheist can say, if you could only see it from the divine point of view, you would realize that this also is God. The Christian replies, don't talk damned nonsense. For Christianity is a fighting religion. It thinks God made the world. That space and time, heat and cold, and all the colours and tastes, and all the animals and vegetables are things that God made up out of his head. As a man makes up a story, 
but it also thinks that a great many things have gone wrong with the world that God made and that God insists and insists very loudly on our putting them right again. And of course, that raises a very big question. If a good God made the world, why has it gone wrong? And for many years, I simply refused to listen to the Christian answers to this question because I kept on feeling, whatever you say and however clever your arguments, isn't it much simpler and easier to say that the world was not made by any intelligent power? Aren't all your arguments simply a complicated attempt to avoid the obvious? But then that threw me back into another difficulty. My argument against God was that the universe seemed so cruel and unjust. But how had I got this idea of just and unjust? A man does not call a line crooked unless he has some idea of a straight line. What was I comparing this universe with when I called it unjust? If the whole show was bad and senseless from A to Z, so to speak, why did I, who was supposed to be a part of the show, find myself in such violent reaction against it? A man feels wet when he falls into water because man is not a water animal. A fish would not feel wet. Of course, I could have given up my idea of justice by saying it was nothing but a private idea of my own. But if I did that, then my argument against God collapsed also. For the argument depended on saying that the world was really unjust, not simply that it did not happen to please my private fancies. Thus, in the very act of trying to prove that God did not exist, in other words, that the whole of reality was senseless, I found I was forced to assume that one part of reality, namely my idea of justice, was full of sense. Consequently, atheism turns out to be too simple. If the whole universe has no meaning, we should never have found out that it has no meaning. Just as if there were no light in the universe and therefore no creatures with eyes, we should never know it was dark dark would be without meaning. Thanks very much. See you next time. God bless.